right, everybody. Welcome back to Nine Dime Media. I'm Dom. Today we have a special, special treat for you. We have a guest who is on YouTube. Um, his name is Jeeves. He does a lot of car reviews, mostly Tesla, but he definitely does a lot more car reviews and uh, getting into customizations, accessories. I, I mean, I've been watching this guy for a while. So um, honestly, I'm not going to dilly dally too much. We're just going to get into it and just going to bring Jeeves in here. Hello, How you doing, man. Good, good. I'm doing well. Good. Yeah, hey, thank you well, uh, for reaching out and having me on. I'm I'm always excited to do this type of stuff. Oh, I'm gl- I'm glad. Uh, I you know for me, I reached out and then I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna reach out and see what see what happens and uh, you know go from there. Yeah. Um, first, first, I want to congratulate you on your incoming uh, baby. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. Big, yeah, yes. It's gonna be a big change. Yeah, you ready ready for fatherhood. I guess so. Uh, I, I just kind of take things as they come. Like all my friends have been, uh, they're like, tell you what, man, it's over. Like, you have no idea. You won't like, I just, I'm like, Hey, like, well, I'll be fine. Whatever happens, happens. There's millions of people that do this all over the world and, uh, it is what it is. So I'm excited. Good, good, good. I have four. So you're fine. Oh, wow. Yes. You, you, you'll be just fine. And look, you're still doing your podcast and everything. So you got time. Yeah, I, you have to you have to find it. I mean, I'm a I'm a night owl, so I don't really go to bed till like one in the morning. So yeah, I, I have plenty of yeah. time. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man. So what we're gonna do here is um, just ask some questions, and we're gonna go back and forth about it. I mean, definitely don't feel like you have to cut off your answers. You know, be as expletive as possible about your answers, or uh, you know, any comments that you want to make. That's perfectly fine. Because, yeah. I mean, here, I, I like it raw. I, I And I and that was one of the reasons why I reached out to you, because you definitely give it to people straight and really mm-hmm. speak your mind. So, yep. cool. Yeah. So, so for everyone out there, we're really just going to talk about the uh, current landscape of the e, uh, of, of EVs, really. Um, if you guys mm-hmm. don't know, I have a 2020 Model 3 Performance, and Jeeves here has a 2020 Model Y long range. Long range, yep. Yep. Long range. Yeah. One of the, one of the first to say to, to take ownership of it and, you know, definitely yeah. thank you for your efforts in chronicling that for, for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. when we start, of course, we have to acknowledge the big man in the room, Tesla. Mm-hmm. So in, in your, in your space, how do you feel they're doing right now as far as, um, as a company, um, new models. Uh, what are you looking forward to? What, 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 you, what you got, man? So I, I think um, it was kind of surprising when I was listening to their Q4 earnings call ending last year, uh, whatever it came out a few weeks ago. Um, I think the it, Tesla in a way could be boring moving from here on out in the sense that They've done the exciting stuff. They got the Model S to be successful. They got the 3 to come out. They got the X. They got the Y. So now they have an an established base of everything Mm -hmm. coming out. But we're always looking for what's the next thing. Where's the $25,000 car? Where's the Roadster, the Cybertruck? Where are all these things happening? But Tesla has to solidify their foundation that they've created, which is insanely impressive for this new automotive company to be now producing over a million cars a year in about a 10 year time frame, And they're basically sold out from every model for at least six months. Um, so I, I think Tesla's in a really good place. I think that some of the excitement is behind us and there may be no new models for the rest of this year. The roadster could be five or six years out. Um, but that's okay because mm-hmm. they have so much that, they need to work on. Uh, they need to make their service a little bit better. Um, they need to make the quality control as good as possible because these cars cost as much as Mercedes and BMWs and and all that stuff. So, um, but I think Tesla's in an excellent position. And once uh, t- uh, Texas opens up and Berlin opens up, um, I mean they're, they're going to be able to reduce the time frame for deliveries and meet the demand. And that's really going to hurt the competition um, because it looks like right now that uh, the Mustang Mach-E and the Hyundai Ioniq, and it, it looks like these other brands are right there with Tesla. 
Uh, but as far as manufacturing these cars, they're not even remotely close. Yeah, They produce right. electric vehicles that have decent range. Um, and that's great. And I've driven them and they are excellent. Like they're, they're fun. Um, but to get up, if they were up at, with Tesla's popularity, there's no way that their wait times would be uh, probably years. Yeah, so. a- absolutely. Um, I, and to speak on that, I mean, for me, yeah, I, I definitely believe like the next leading competitor, whoever that might be, is here. Tesla's up mm-hmm. here. And it's mostly, mm-hmm. like you said, manufacturing. I mean, these guys are, are building. Well, so the first thing I tell people is you got to understand Tesla built the three and Y for expandability for yep. manufacturing. I mean, the prowess and that is just, it's phenomenal. I mean, you know, you, you said, okay, we're going to build it from the ground up. We're going to use as little parts as possible. I mean, Elon of course says the best part is no part. Yeah. That is, that is awesome. And, and here's yeah. the thing people don't even realize when they start saying, Oh yeah, here's a Tesla killer. It's like, you don't understand Tesla was operating unchallenged for te- for about 10 years. Yep. Everybody was thinking that, oh yeah, you know, electric vehicles, all right, whatever. Uh-huh. But yeah, once they really started making them, it was like, oh crap. Okay, now we gotta get on the ball. I mean, but you already gave them the head start they needed. They put out their infrastructure and, and that they control vertically. Yep. No nobody, and and that's their their secret sauce. That's yeah. You, have, you can't compete with that at this point. You just can't. No, you know, it's, and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And they also, like Tesla built a car that people aspire to have. So previous to that, there were no electric vehicles that you were, that you looked up to and you're like, man, I really want that. So they made something that you want to go have. They made driving an electric car cool which is yes. arguably the most important thing they did as far as transitioning to sustainable energy. Absolutely. If if the cars like Lucid is great, uh, Rivian's great, but they would not, all these companies and all this focus on EVs would absolutely not exist if Tesla did not make cars that people uh, don't inspire to drive. So, yes. and, and that, that's why it's frustrating, I think, to the Tesla cult that I call it. Um, it's frustrating. Uh, it frustrates people like when uh, Jim Farley or or the or the government does not um, acknowledge Tesla. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, just to, it's because I'm I want Ford and all of these other companies to make cool EVs for sure. Yes. Um, but why can't you just say? And it's it's great that a U.S. based company that manufactures and provides jobs for U.S. citizens. Why would you ignore? I, I don't. Yeah, it just it's, doesn't it's, make it's, sense to me. It's it's very baffling. And then you know, for Biden to just give that little excerpt, like, "Oh yeah, Tesla here," you know, but praise GM yeah. for everything. It's like that's that's backwards. Because I mean, there's enough room to eat for everybody. Like that's that's yeah. the crazy thing. There's enough room to eat, so oh, it's fine. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much. The market is massive. I mean, and and there's enthusiasts who are going to buy six cars. There's individuals. There's people that message me. Um, they're like, "Yeah, I have ten Teslas." I'm like, "What?" They're like, "I have a Robo. I'm I'm just waiting for Robo Taxi to come out." Oh gosh! I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, yeah. That's well, and then and then just the repeat customers. I mean, you have people that buy cars like um, you know, you have uh, I'm not sure if you've seen their channel, but Derek. It's like D A E R I. Oh yeah, I'm I'm aware of yeah. who that is. Yeah. They as soon as a new one comes out, they're buying it, trading in the next one, or selling it. So it's like mm-hmm. they're going back and forth like it's nothing. Yeah. And then, you know, that's amazing in and of itself. So you have repeat buyers that whenever something yeah. new changes on it, they're getting another one. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, be able to have, yeah. Yeah. And then it goes back into the used market and other people who couldn't buy it new then can afford it. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it is nuts. Yeah. Nice. All right. Let's move on to what do you think of Lucid? So, um, that's also unique because I've seen the facilities out here in Arizona. Um, there's two massive warehouses in Casa Grande, which is like 30 or 40 minutes from me. I've driven by them both twice. Insane facilities that they built. I don't Mm -hmm. know what's inside them. I don't know how functional they are. Um, but they've spent hundreds of millions of dollars on building these facilities. I've also seen... Uh, the Lucid Air Dream Edition in person in Scottsdale Mall. Um, I haven't driven it yet. 
I asked them, um, it's funny, one of the people that works at the Lucid dealership watches my channel and they were, they wanted me to go like test drive it. And I was like, do you mind if I just bring a camera so I can like film my experience, but they wouldn't let me do that. Yeah. So I haven't even driven it yet. Um, but it's a beautiful car. Uh, I don't think it's, well, the interior is beautiful. The exterior, mm -hmm. I don't, doesn't really like, it's like, nah, whatever. But the inside is luxurious. Um, it's fast. So I, I, I like it. But again, it, it also comes down to like, is that, does that like really inspire me? It, you know, I, I, yeah. I don't know. And it's also going to be hard for them to ramp up their production. So I, I don't know where they're going to get. Yeah. That's, and you know, I, I have not seen one in person. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, but I do a lot of research and, you know, for, for Lucid to be what they are. Yes, it is a beautiful car outside. Yes. It does not do anything for me. I think, yeah. you know, a lot of people, um, aftermarket, you know, accessories wraps, then it'll probably look good. That's what it probably have yeah. to happen. But also I think, you know, their, their target, their target audience is you're not going to sell a lot. Yeah. So, so that's where it's like, okay, you 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 need to. At some point, you have to have a plan in there to grab the average consumer because yep. we're the people that's going to prop you up. Yeah, and and that's the part that's hard. But then also their efficiency, from what I understand, digging into the numbers, isn't quite what you know. It's it's raw power. It's not refined. Mm. So that that's the hard part. See, I I was impressed by their EPA. They were able to get a 520 mile range out of I don't know which model, but they were able to get that in real life. Um, I, I think whereas, that was the, air, the dream. The, yeah, the air was it the, the, dream. the top end the, the or dream whatever? Edition, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I think that's extremely impressive for the first time because, yeah. you know, Tesla doesn't have a 500 mile car, but oh. Tesla also uses, you know, the interesting thing when I listen to Elon on Joe Rogan's podcast is he's like, Joe's like, I want my car to have a thousand miles of range. And Elon's well, like, that, that's not really necessary. Like how much do you actually need on a daily basis? I think Tesla could flex and and load a car with a bunch of batteries and make it 500 mile range. But I think yeah. they're they're trying to get the weight of the cars down, still make them sporty, uh, whereas mm -hmm. Lucid's just going for range. Yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, yeah, if you made or imagine pulling up to a supercharger on your trip mm -hmm. with something that has a, a 135 kilowatt hour battery, which I, I probably need to do some more research on that, but I think that's about how big that lucid battery is and i mean at yeah. 135 kilowatt hours yeah you see, i mean yes the efficiency is good there but it's it's for constant charging that's that's not good because now you're you're paying probably as much as gas if not more mm, and, and i think that's point. where that's where the issue com comes in and that's where i didn't believe it either I'm, I'm i'm excited i'm like come on come on tesla give me a a 400 mile range model y come on just do it but then you know yeah after with the after with my um uh, having my uh, Tesla for about six months now, it, it makes sense. It's like, yeah, you don't need it. Cause I mean, as soon as yeah. you get to a, a charger, you charge for however long and keep moving. Yep. And it's, and it's yeah, refreshing. You just, you, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Like when I drove across the country this past summer, um, yeah, every two to three hours, closer to three hours, probably you get out, you walk around a random part of the country, um, <laughs> stretch, see what shopping center you're in or um, in Texas, uh, and I think it's an Amarillo. I don't remember, but there's like, you're at the Conoco, like mm. historic gas station. You go to these weird, uh, and unique places. You charge for 10 to 15, maybe 20, 25 minutes. Um, and you're on your way. So it's, it's slower, but it's not as bad as you would, you would think. Yeah. We did a, uh, a drive from here in Charlotte, North Carolina, which, um, you probably should look into moving here. I know. It's really, I, it's, I it's really nice. Considering it. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I went to school I, in High Point, so I uh, oh, so, okay, yeah. yeah, so you know, you know yep. the area, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I know Charlotte decently. Yeah, well. so we 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 did a trip from here in Charlotte down to Jacksonville, um, Florida. Yeah, and I, I used a better a, a better route or a better route planner, however you say it. Um, and and for me, I just prioritized when I got to my destination, I had at least fifty percent. So I could have gotten down there with two charges but i stopped for the third so in that way when i get to my destination i can at least drive around um, yeah and that's that's something you have to think about yeah and, and i put, yeah, I put a lot there. of thought yeah yeah because yeah. 
Because, I mean, in a gas car, you're like, yeah, when I get there, I'll just fill up with gas and just hang out, whatever. It's, you know. But, yeah, with an EV, you don't know who you're staying with or if they, one, have an EV charger, two, have a, uh, you know, a, a 110 outlet for you to plug in or, or however. But, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was definitely something that was really nice. So, But, yeah, I mean, in conjunction with Lucid, it's like I like the range. That's nice. If I could afford it, I would definitely get it. But, you know, it's that's that's. It's almost uh, it's unrealistic to really do that because you don't need to. Yeah, yeah, you're looking at like the mid. I think they start at seventy, but I'm mm-hmm. but I don't think that model's being produced for several not years. Yet. I think they're they're starting with that high end model and then they're trickling down. Yeah, um, not yet. But yeah, it is it is crazy expensive. Even if yeah. even if I could afford it, I don't know that I would. I don't even know that I'd buy it. Um, I'd probably <laughs> buy like a Taycan over it. Um. I just think that's a cooler looking car. But yeah, for, for that kind of efficiency and range, yes, the Taycan would definitely be be up there. Yeah. Right, what about Rivian? Uh Rivian are sweet. My I have a friend out here, she ordered one. Um, she should be getting it hopefully at the end of the year. She got the is it the R one S, which is the SUV, not the truck? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, what she ordered. Oh, that's good. Um so I'm so I'll be interested to see that. I've seen the truck in person. Um, it's beautiful. It's luxurious. They have some very unique features they thought out for going out into the wilderness, even though we know that no <laughs> one is going to take it off the road. Not happening. No, no They can do all the that. commercials they want. People are going <laughs> to commute with these things. They're going to go to their kid's baseball game. And when they pull off the road, to go onto the the dirt, that's as far yeah. that's as far off road as it'll ever get. You're 100 percent right. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's perfectly fine. Now, I will say they are definitely such an innovative group of people, mm-hmm. which most of you know a lot of them are from Tesla. Which you know, hey, that's fine. You know, it yeah. competition. It is what it is. What happens? But yeah. as a person who was looking for a truck before I got my Tesla, and then I got my Tesla, and it was great. And then I saw the R1T, and I was like. I looked at my wife. I was like, I might have to get that. Yeah, I, I think I might have to. I'm, 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 you know, I've been in the market for a truck. That yep. one is perfect. It has all the bells and whistles. It's very Tesla like. I, I got to have it. But um, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll see. I, I, it, it'll be a while before I really consider that. But I mean, Rivian as a whole, I, I think business wise, they have a good product. But I think their upcoming fulfillment for um, Amazon trucks yeah. might not, it's not going to bode well for them a little bit because of the fact that, you know, Rivian, I'm sure Amazon's like, hey, you know, th- those trucks are nice, but um, what about what about what we got going on? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, they're going to be focusing on something that, yeah, that isn't going to be noticed by like mainstream consumers. Um might be good for them as a business. I really want them to make it. Like, yes, yes. I absolutely want them to make it because I like their, because I'm not even like a, a truck person necessarily, but like I would consider that. Like, it's cool enough yeah. for me to go, hey, maybe I kind of, I kind of do want that. Um, well, the hard, the hard part is just realizing that a lot of these companies that we're talking about or whoever you're, you're the, the, the team that you're rooting for, they may not make it. Like, all, everybody that's out here now may not make it. Yeah. So that's the hard yeah, truth, absolutely. unfortunately. Yeah, it is crazy. And I, I forget that a lot of times when I'm like, even when I go see those lucid facilities, I'm like, holy cow, this is really happening. It still may not happen. Right. Um, it's like even Tesla for many years was just on the verge of, of not making it. And they're like a miracle that they've yeah. Yeah, been <laughs> able to make it. Yeah, the Model Three. That I think that was the tipping point. Like it was, it was mm-hmm. either go or no go at that point. And you know, yes, they made it. But yeah, I think Rivian. If I think if they can figure it out, they should be able to. They should be good. I, and I really hope they figure it out. And that and that's yeah. where a lot of the companies, you know, us being in the Tesla cult or the Elon, you know, the yeah. Elon burst. That's where that's right. everybody does not have an Elon. Yeah, he, he doesn't care about the bottom line. He's not a businessman per se. He's yeah an innovator. He's a thinker. That's that's what you need. I mean, it's it's like Apple and Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs yeah. wasn't a coder. He wasn't a businessman. He was hey, can the average person pick up this product and use it? Yeah, and that's what and that's where Apple is today. And you know, and in conjunction with that, it's like look, 
Riven, you guys, you guys got to do some creative management here. I don't know what's going on, but we like your product. We want you to make it. I think a lot of people are rooting for them to make it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so next we got Ford and their mm -hmm. F-150 Lightning and, you know, some of their other ventures that they have coming up. Yeah. I, I've, um, so I've driven the Mach-E, the California Route 1 edition. And then I've driven the performance. I've driven the Mach-E GT. And then I've driven the Mach-E GT with the performance pack on it or the track pack, whatever they call it. Right. Um, yeah, the car, it's well made. It's like, I'll, I'll say that those, like the Hyundai, the Ford, they seem to be more put together than Tesla. Like they have less, their fit and finish is better. Like the doors close a little bit better. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. But at the same time, they are very like, oh, this is just another car, but it runs on electricity. Whereas when you get in a Tesla, you're like, whoa, there's glass everywhere and there's this screen and there's no buttons. Um, so it's like a very normal car. I, um, I, th I would say the, the Mach E is probably second, second or it's like tied for second for me. Cause I like the Ionic five a lot too, uh, mm -hmm. under just under the Tesla model. Y. Um, I saw my first one the other day, just to note. It yeah. Was, it was, yeah. It looked pretty cool. Yeah, they do look cool. Um, the The one design feature that doesn't look great is like how thin the tires are, whereas mm -hmm. Tesla has meatier tires, so it looks sporty. Mm -hmm. um, but the thinner tires are better for efficiency, um, and those the Machis are getting better than what they're rated from the factory. So, you know, that's that's a good thing. I've been seeing that a lot. Like a lot of people that's testing them, you know, I think Ford, you know, did the whole undersell over deliver thing, which is definitely good when you're looking at the competition. You know, if you're yeah. going up against Tesla, you definitely want to say, OK, well, we're not good. And where Tesla kind of overstates their range a little bit because I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I still have yet to get 299 miles out of my I tell, I still yeah. love it. But, you know, I just don't get it. That's where I'm at too. Like, yeah, I love it, but I'm like, Hey, I don't know how you guys got that, got that number. Um, so <laughs> like if you're yeah, driving 30 miles an hour, just say, it. I mean, that's fine. You know, just, just, yeah, let if know. you're going 30, great. Then I'll go. That's <laughs> fine. But I just want to know how you got it. Um, yeah. Now, now the, it's the an equation. Yeah. Oh, that I did not know. I thought it was kind of like, you know, it was a uh, based on flat land, kind of like on a dynamometer, you know, optimal settings you know optimal driving at 55 miles an hour because i mean i can see that kind of because i mean yeah my my average watt hour per mile is like 282 and i've punched it i've been driving at 80 and yeah. things like that so yeah that's what my mine's 281 nice. um so that's yeah over thirty five thousand miles so yeah it is i don't know yeah, it's amazing. I don't know how well, the F1, now for the for me, the F one fifty Lightning was something that when they unveiled it, I was like, okay, you guys kind of got me because I'm in the market for a truck. Yep, you made a very good truck. I mean, I've always loved the F one fifty; it's iconic, as well as like you said, very well put together. And that's the some of the things that Tesla. I forgot where I read it or I was watching it, but Tesla prioritized the masses and getting the vehicle delivered over making yep. it perfect. Yep. Which does make sense. But when you're going up against like Ford and some of the legacy automakers, they have the nanometer measurements of door panel gaps and, and, you know, the fit and finish is just well because they've been doing it so long. Yeah. And I do get that, but I think at the same time, it's going to be hard for them because, with Ford, I, they've never really been the best at one software updates, almost like an Android phone. When you get an Android phone, it's supported for that you know of for like at least two to three years. After that, yeah, you're not getting any updates. It's going to be slow. Hey, whatever. Buy another one. Yeah. You know, and, and that's where they have they have to get better at that. Um, but, you know, the massive frunk for the F-150 was like a game changer for me because I'm like, dude, and as a dad of four, you know how many groceries I can put in there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you like, can have. I'll... Yeah, you could go to Costco and just load that thing up. Yeah, my Costco run is going to be absolutely beautiful. But then the yeah. other thing is, how heavy is this battery? Well, and, and a lot of outside of the other EVs or outside of Tesla, the other EVs, 
unfortunately, we don't have enough data for any of them over a long period of time. I mean, at least with yeah. Tesla, you know that there's people driving 2012 Tesla Model S's with, you know, 400,000 miles. That's they, all they had to do is keep changing the tires and maybe a battery replacement. And that's yeah. where I, I caution a lot of people. I say, yes, they all look good. But what is their data five, six years down the road? With Tesla, we do have that. And you have to consider that because you mess around and buy one of these vehicles and, you know, it's having issues with the battery. And you're like, oh, I never should bought this thing. It's a lemon. And it's like, well, yeah. you know, if you're one of my friends, I'm going to say I told you so, you know, yeah. buy what you want. But just understand, and I'm not the authority on any of this, but just know that, hey, I'm, I'm, I do my study on this. I watch this and, hey, just take it with a grain of salt. Just make sure, you know. Yeah, like I and I. um yeah, because at the end of the day, I, I don't really care what anyone buys, because I don't doesn't doesn't affect me. Um, but like right. when I'm telling a friend who is going to spend their money on a car, it's very hard for me to recommend something outside of Tesla because um, I can, I I know they're going to be okay. Like yeah. I'm pretty confident if they buy a Tesla or if they bought a Honda or if they bought that. Like, I know you're going to be able to drive that car and they have service centers and they have a charging network. And it's like the smallest leap from going from a gas to an electric vehicle. And a lot mm -hmm. of that does come back to the charging network. You know, you type in your destination, it sets up all the chargers for you. It's very easy. Um, yeah, it's not like it's not a knock on the other manufacturers. It's just more a okay. caution of saying, like, I'm your friend. I'm just trying to give you the the advice that I know uh would be reasonable for you i yeah that's i well, think it may come off sometimes like oh i make tesla content and i drive a tesla so everyone else should but really it's it's yeah it's just not that at all yeah and then the the other the other factor for that is their ultium cell batteries and i probably maybe overlooked looking at what they're what it's composed of but i only assume mm -hmm. it's composed of the same thing as the uh batteries in the long range vehicles of teslas you know nickel cadmium and you know the degradation and that's those are big things and you know a lot of them are starting are saying that well first off they outsource a lot of legacy automakers outsource a lot of things which is somewhat of a problem because yeah. you can't walk up to somebody and say hey where did this battery come from i don't know we bought it from the battery maker i don't know at least with tesla as a whole, you can walk up to somebody and come and say, "Hey, where do these batteries come from?" Oh yeah, we made them in our, in, you know, in our uh, Nevada, Giga Nevada, and it was uh, processed on this line and this day, blah blah. blah such, such. And it's that vertical, it's that verticality that they that they've integrated so well that yeah, ma shifting around these microcontrollers and the chip shortages and that was nothing less than than absolutely brilliant. You know, legacy automakers, their code is developed by some offsite team that's not even part of their company. So that means yeah. you can't push out updates to them. They don't code for um, anything. They they have a specific code in mind for a specific chip. They, they're one track minded. And it's just like, that's not the way you do business anymore. You have to, you know, if anything, this pandemic has shown us that you have to be able to be flexible. You, you cannot yeah. rely on, you know, what you've done in the past. You just can't. Yeah. Even there was a, there was um, at one point when they removed lumbar support from the passenger seat of the Model Ys. I don't think they come with it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, they looked into the day. They were probably looking for a way to be like, okay, there's a chip shortage. Part of the chip shortage is what goes into power seats is what I found. So um, one of the chips that probably controls lumbar support, they probably looked into the data. And what Elon tweeted was... Um, not a lot of people are using lumbar sp support in the passenger seat, so we removed it. Yeah. So that may be true, but what may be truer is they were trying to find a way to produce more cars and use less chips. Um, but the fact that they're able to look into the into the data and do that on the fly is incredible. Um, it's it's just so unique. There's not like it's kind of funny too. I had a friend send me who works at a Mercedes dealership. He sent me. A video of a model y that for some reason came into mercedes for service i don't know what they were yeah. doing to it <laughs> but the front door had the black alcantara like where the white piece would go yeah and then the rear door had the white piece 
for like a white interior car. So like they literally were something happened where this car got half new and half old yeah. in the back and it had white interior. So like there's crazy things that go on in that facility and, and funny things yeah. end up being well, produced that, because of that. But. That almost sounds like uh hey uh hey Jim, we're out of Alcantara. We'll put the white one on there, it's fine. It'll, it'll be all right. Yeah, just throw this one in. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, even they, you know, they they deliver some cars without the uh, the the USB C port. So, yeah, I get it, and uh, and a lot of people laughed at Tesla for that until GM had to do that. Yep, that was and that was hilarious to me. I I, I, I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, when you first, what was going through your head before you bought your your uh, Model Y? So I was, where were you you at? I was in, oh, so like what first got me into Tesla or just. Yeah. Yeah. Like what convinced you to buy the Tesla? Like right before you bought it and you know, what were you, you know, what headspace were you in? What were you looking at? What was your, your other options at the time? Uh, So basically I was a medical device sales rep. So I was driving two to 3000 miles a month um, and I was paid by my company, uh, $400 flat fee, uh, for a car. I was Mm. also paid, um, per mile. I was, I can't remember what the rate was, but I was paid per mile for the gas that I was using in my focus ST. Um, so I was driving so much and I was, and I was getting that stipend. I just was like, man, if I was driving an electric vehicle, I could be making money off of just all the driving that I'm doing. The mm-hmm. other part of that is I create content and I knew that the Model Y was going to be popular with a lot of people. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to get the long range model, which is what most people would buy, and then just make a bunch of videos on it. So, and my wife likes having an SUV. So that that was like the all encompassing thought. Mm-hmm. Previous to that, I was not in any way interested in Tesla. I thought they were boring looking and whatever. Then I drove one, and then you know how that goes. <laughs> so um, that's when the gears started to turn for me. So, uh, but it just, it's such, it's so incredibly convenient. Like when I, I was driving to several hospitals a day, um, in and out of the car, storing stuff in it. I was carrying a bunch of stuff. Um, it is just in and out. I can set the air conditioning. I, I can preheat the battery. I I can pop the trunk open as I'm walking to my car with a handful of stuff. So there's so many conveniences to the car and it's still fun to drive. It's very fast. It has a great sound system. I'd listen to my podcasts in it. Um, It was just, uh, it was kind of a no brainer, especially after I got it. Like it it was just, (laughs) just, and it still is so fun to drive. So, but that's kind of what led me to getting a Tesla was my job. And then partially content creation, and then eventually that led into being my full time job. So, uh, awesome. but yeah, that's yeah. that's how I got into it. Yeah, the convenience factor for me is where because I also have a, a, a Traverse, and okay. going going in between the two cars, I sometimes get out of my Traverse without turning it off. Yeah, I do because that too it, now. Yeah, it, it's just so you know you're so ingrained. Like yeah, I get out the car and I'm and I'm gone. You know, all right, yep. fine. Just listen. And just I have to run back to, to the car because it's still on. It locked. Yeah, I yeah, know. I've, I've done that several times. Where I've even in other electric vehicles that I drive, um, I'll get out and they're like beeping. I'm like, oh, you have to turn this thing off. Um, it's just become, yeah, like second nature. Yeah, and I, I that's where I think a lot of EV makers you have to get rid of that button. It was great yeah. when you introduced it, but for an electric vehicle, yes, put a small sensor in the seat that knows my ass is in the seat. Yep. And if I'm not, that's or it. if nobody's in the car, turn off. Like, yeah, that's, yeah, just, just do it. Just make it simple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, you know, it was just something that I was like, yeah, you know, I, my, it was seamless for my wife. Like she drives it most of the time, which you know, I'm sure everybody's like, oh, well, he, she's got a good husband. She drives it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, so now, if you could, if you could buy, well, if you had to buy any other EV other than Tesla, like Tesla's completely out, what would you pick from your experience right now, and why? Mm. Uh, I'd probably pick. I'd probably pick a Porsche Taycan. Mm. But 
that's, I mean, I can't really afford a Tycon. They're a hundred, <laughs> basically a hundred grand, but let's say money wasn't, well, do you want money to be a factor or not in this question? Well, so you already gave me an answer for money not being a factor, which is essentially yeah. of course. So if money was a factor, what would you if have money, to? So if money was a factor, I think what I would do right now is wait until Hyundai came out with the Ionic 5N variant. Um, the, the, I love the Ionic 5 as it is, but it wouldn't, it didn't excite me like, like the Model Y did. Like getting mm-hmm. in a Model Y to me is still more exciting for some reason. Um, so, but the N variant of the Ionic is going to be sick. Like that thing's going to be fast okay. as hell. Um, and I've driven other cars in Hyundai's N line and they're incredible. They're, I mean, they're fast, they handle well, they've done everything correctly. And I, and Albert Bierman heads their N division, who was the head of BMW's M division. So, oh, okay. um, so I have a ton of confidence in him and what he's done with that brand. So I would probably be waiting to see when that comes out and try to get my hands on one of those. So what about the Ionics twin sister, the EV6? Um, so I just, I haven't, I have, well, let's, I have seen one. I drove past one the other day, um, but I haven't driven one. Okay. So, and I've heard a lot of people say great things about it. So I'm sure it's awesome, but I just, I really haven't looked into it much and I yeah. haven't seen one in the flesh, like just be able to stand around and look at it. The pictures look sweet. They do. Um, nice. So yeah, yeah, yeah I just, but a... I just haven't researched a lot. I've got a GM here in the uh, here in Charlotte um, of a Kia dealership, and you know I reached out to him. I was like, "Yeah, hey, do you mind if I come by?" And and I and in my line of work, I'm a systems engineer, so I've helped out his dealership plenty of times. So yeah. when I asked, it was like, "Hey, yeah, if you want to come take it, you know, drive around." Other people, like I went next door to the Volkswagen dealership, and was like, "Hey, um, that used ID4 that you got on trade in, uh, you mind if I come take videos of it?" They're like, "Well, we already did that before," so um, I'm like. Okay, well, I'm sorry. You know that one person spoke for everybody. My bad. You know? Yeah. So, no. Yeah. yeah it, it is. Yeah. Dealing with dealerships can be finicky. Doing that, um, you really just you have to get to the right person that'll let you do it. A lot of times they just don't want to bother. But yeah, I, I wish they would understand that. Like, you're not going to like trash the car or anything. Like, no. you're literally going to take some video of it, share your opinion, and say thanks to this dealership for letting me drive it. Like, you would drive some business if they sell one car because of that video. That's great. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah it, 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 it's up at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, in your last video that you just recently uh, did, um, yep. you said that you are, and honestly, this isn't what I what I sent you, but it's not like ambush journalism or anything. No, no, <laughs> no, yeah, was, no, you're good. Yeah, it, it was your idea ambush. of getting getting an older Tesla Model S. Yeah. So, how you know? Ex- ex- could you expand uh, expand more on like your your idea, your your notion on on, on doing that? I I just think. Um it would be interesting to see how that car drives and like there's good content there in, in giving people a place to watch someone that like live vicariously through me and say, mm-hmm. Oh, this kid just bought a car with a hundred thousand miles, a model S a hundred thousand miles. Cause it's appealing. They're like in the mid thirties for like 30 yeah. grand, 35 grand for a model S. But everyone looks at that and be like, there's a reason that's 35 grand. And I don't know if it's because the rear windows don't work, the battery's right. about to go. Um, so I just think there would be some good content to make, do some road trips with it. Um, Gruber Automotive is up in Scottsdale here and I've done a video with him. Uh, he rebuilds batteries and they have a battery pack that apparently goes 700 plus miles. Oh yeah, um, okay. So, and, and like Pete's always down to do anything. Like he's, he sends out these aggressive emails with his, his like strict <laughs> opinion on things. It's very funny. He's, and he's a very smart guy and runs an incredible facility. So um, I just think there's some really good content there to share with people. Maybe the battery goes and I have to replace it and share those costs with people. And mm-hmm. uh, that, yeah, that's, that's just my interest. Cause I haven't driven a really old one. Um, really old is, you know, 2012 for Tesla. Right. But uh 
yeah, I, I just think that would be some good content to do is really what that came down to. So two things. One, has Gruber rebuilt since that fire? Or, yeah. I don't know. I haven't been up there to see. I mean, I think they have several warehouses there. I think mm-hmm. he has like six. But the one okay. that they lost was one I toured that had all of those roadsters on lifts. Okay. Um, so, but I'm sure it's not rebuilt yet. There's no way. Okay. They, might, well, they may and, have figured and, it and, out. And that was just me asking questions as a fan because sometimes, like, yeah. I watch a lot of your videos. So that yeah. question, I was like, when you said group, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, I almost feel like I was there with you. It's like, uh, I know. Yeah. 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 How, how are they doing? Are they okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Pete's still sending out his emails and everything seems to be okay. I sent him an email and uh, just saying, like, sorry, what happened? But they, he didn't respond. So I, yeah, I don't know. But, um, Apparently that's the second fire they've had. Oh wow! So yeah, was it, was it battery true. related, or do they think it's battery related? Related? I think it was battery related. Ah, uh, okay, uh, understand. But yeah, they lost so, like all these little like when in the video I show like all the little workbenches those guys have, and mm-hmm. they have the whole battery of the roadster, and they're going through each individual cell and testing it, and there was just, it's all gone. Like it's just, uh, yeah, it's just that's awful. Tough. That's, yeah, that's tough. Uh, yeah, they they remind me of um, Rich Rebuilds and the Electrified yes. Garage. Oh, he, is he not? On. Is he not the best? Oh man, his like I watch his content for the pure comedy. Yeah, like, I don't care what it, he's talking about. Yeah, he he makes the mundane stuff absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like when he took that guy's wife to Olive Garden. Oh. Like I was, I was <laughs> in tears watching that. Like I I was just like this guy is unbelievable. At one point in the video. I was slightly convinced that he literally took this guy, like, really took her to dinner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, my well, God. but you know what? A lot of you, a lot of your videos are like that too, and I absolutely love your dry comedy. It is hilarious. Like, the most funniest yeah. thing that you ever said to me was, <laughs> "Excuse me for my crudeness, but owning a Tesla isn't for everybody." It's like, it's like eating booty. I was like, yeah, like. But my eyes lit up not because you were wrong, but that's because I was like, "Oh my god, he is so right." Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, that. No, that's what I did. I discovered that in my video because, like, people that know me in real life, um, they know that like I say like insane things that you you could never pot. Like the other day, we were on the golf course, and I told there was like this. I can't remember what song came on, but I just looked at my friend. And I said, "This would be a great song to rollerblade to." And like he was like, "How does your brain work?" And, no, but that's um, the. But as as your fans, that's what we ask because I'm I'm watching your videos, and of course, like I said, I got four kids. I'm like cooking dinner. I'm doing yep. other things while listening to your video and look and, and looking at it. But then you'll say something. I'm like, "Did he just? Oh my god, that's hilarious! <laughs> like, what, what is wrong with this guy?" <laughs> yeah, no, I know, and I I realized that I need to like when I was going through my focus ST series, I made 163 videos on that car alone, which is too many. Um, But I realized toward the end of that series that my friends, they would watch it and they'd be like, you're so, you're so like tied down on this is the air intake and this is how you put it on as opposed to just letting like, just talking about whatever, whoever walks by, whatever's going around, what things are happening in my life, things are happening in, in politics or whatever, just let it come out. Um, yeah. because that's like you, like you, like you, for example, um, you have four kids, you have a job, you have, you have all these things going on in your life. You don't want to sit down and watch someone that's like, well, this right here, like you oh. want to hear, you want to laugh or be loose. You don't oh, have yeah. to be fully dialed in oh, yes. to be entertained by the video. So that's what, that's why I, I just, I try to just be me. Yeah, um, I- I think I speak for all of your fans by saying, please keep that up. That is, yeah. your videos are the highlight of my day when when stuff like that happens. It's like, oh yeah, I'm about to tune in. Oh, he's about to say something. He's about to say something crazy. Let's do it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I try. Yeah. I try not to force it. Just let it, you know, naturally come out and, you know, hopefully yeah. I'm, I'm lucky. My sponsors are cool with like me just letting go. So, yeah. Well, like I said, Hey man, keep it up. We, we absolutely love yeah. it. No, so with the current, you. So with the current rise in gas prices, EV sales have doubled. So what, what, what you think is all Tesla or are they just looking for anything to buy at this point? 
Um, so, so gas, so sales have doubled since the prices have gone up. Is this like yes. a, okay. Um, I'm not totally sure that, that, yeah, this is weird for me because I don't want people to make a snap decision and go and buy an electric vehicle just because gas prices are high Yeah, because you're going to most likely most people will finance the car and they're going to be stuck with this decision for many years for five mm -hmm. to seven years depending on how long they finance it for gas prices are going to come back down yeah um so i guess i'm i'm just looking i just don't want someone to make a stupid financial decision be like oh gas prices are up i gotta get an electric vehicle and put themselves in more debt when they could have driven their camry like maybe you put uh, get your spark plugs done, get your tires done, like invest money into the car that you have that's paid off or get your car paid off as opposed to going into more debt. So you're not paying for gas. Um, yeah. unless like, there in there, I don't know. I get, I guess I went off track here. What's your, so the current rising gas and EV sales. Um, I just think that EVs cost so much and you can still get like a used Honda civic or something for under 20 grand and it's still very efficient and mm -hmm. you can reduce your cost of gas. I think if you can, you should have one gas car and one electric car. And that's like the perfect mm -hmm. setup because if you want to do a road trip and not worry about charging, you just get in your gas car and you go. Um, and then for your daily mundane driving, um, you can get in your electric car and it costs you very, very little and there's no maintenance that comes with the car. So uh, I, I guess I just, I look out, I just caution people just to not make a snap uh, financial decision like that because just to get what your neighbor has or anything like that, just, you know, make a sound decision. Yeah. Well, and then on the flip side of that, you have, you know, EVs costing more, you know, I mean, Tesla, they, they had major price hikes and I mean, yeah, for people, well, people who already have their, their order in, they're fine. Yeah. But for new people, does this really turn them off of EVs because it's like, oh, see, it's, it's too expensive. Can't do it. Yeah, it may. Um, but again, Tesla has so much demand right now yeah. that they could, I mean, I don't know how high they could go with the model Y that they're still sold out for at least six months. So, um, I, I think they're going to come back down once the new battery cells are, once the 4680s are in, once the new chassis is implemented, I think they will reduce their costs on them. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't know when that's going to be. I, I have no idea. And a lot of it is supply chain issues too. So yeah, well, we'll so, the other, so I'm sure you, you've been aware um, recently, they've actually introduced the new EPA rating for their uh, model way model Y Jesus. Long, uh, not long range. Let's see, look at it. Model Y Android. all wheel drive. Yes. With 279 miles. So, a lot of speculation happens with this car as is it LFP or is it uh, 4680 or is it, yeah. you know, 2160 with a uh, great efficiency? Yeah. I would say I actually just, I literally just filmed a video on this today on this topic because oh. I saw that too. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that well the other interesting thing is i don't know that it's all wheel drive i think it could be still real rear wheel drive uh -huh. um if i were to guess it's probably a 4680 cell car nice to be just getting probably, that just less sales yeah yeah because yeah, that, that's what I think it is. And, and it also might be the new chassis as well to reduce weight and to be able to get yep. that range up because 280 is impressive out of an entry yes. level model. Yes. The question is, how where are they going to price it? Is it going to be 50K? It was supposed to be $41,000. That's Supposedly, what yeah. that they yeah. were. But now there's no way they can price it as for, at 41. Yeah, no, you can. I, I think it probably sits. I, well, so we also have a, a order in for our Model Y. It's supposed to be mm -hmm. made in July, which is perfectly fine because um, it's really my wife's after her seeing my three and, you know, us loving it and the trips. She absolutely loves it. So she wants the well, And with us having four kids, we had to get the seven seater model. And mm. yeah, ha we had to because yeah. we love it, but we kind of need the space, too. Yeah. But 
you know, and I think our total came up to 64 ish. And of course, yeah. the sales tax and whatnot to push it to 67, 68. Yep. So I, I, I personally think they're going to have to price it probably 55. Because, I mean, if you price it too low, you're going to cannibalize a lot of your current orders. So yep. you have to price it to a point to where it's close enough that people with their uh, current orders will say, well, you know what? I'm not going to redo all that just for that. But new people are going to say, OK, well, you know, what? that's that's my limit there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah. go for that. Yeah, I, I think it'll be uh, three to five thousand dollars higher than a base model three. So I think that puts us in that 50 to 55 range mm-hmm. um, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, I, I hope it, I hope it has the new cells. What's crazy to me is like when I looked at the numbers that Elon proposed at uh, some launch event, it was battery like, day? yeah, it might've been battery day. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was like 10% lighter, 14% more efficient. So if you mm-hmm. use those two percentages that he gave, then the new Y long range should have over 400 miles of range, right? Like just using the numbers that they give you. So, but I don't think that's going to happen because I think that will cannibalize S and X sales. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, the, and that's, that's why you built it. That's why he built it the way he did. I mean, hell, he got rid of the plaid plus because he was like, yeah, plaid's just fine. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, th- yeah, that was interesting too. Like, I, I don't know. Cause he was like, well, people don't really need the plaid plus because the plaid's enough. It's like, no, people want as much as they can get. Right. If you made a $150,000 Tesla that had extra stuff on it, like people would buy it. You, it would be hard to get because they would buy the hell out of it. Yeah. So, well, so question, I don't know. You've seen this too. Mm-hmm. The idiot that Duke's a hazard is yeah. the Tesla. Yes, um, I have seen that. And there's been um, interesting feedback I've gotten on that video. Me personally, when I watched that, I was like, that is crazy. <laughs> like that per- that car was in orbit. And <laughs> I thought like the person, pr- I was like the person probably broke their back to the landing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but apparently no one was hurt. I, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, and apparently it was a rental car from Turo. Yeah, I mean I'm hearing that too and I, but now the question is what kind of rental? And I would only assume Turo. Yeah. I, I yeah, it, I don't know. I it was um and you know who else was involved? Like Alex Choi was there. Um he's like a automotive YouTuber. He okay. has like twin turbo Lamborghinis and stuff. I I don't know. He's always on like the wrong side of anything that's happening on the internet. He's never the the good guy. Um <laughs> So it, it's, yeah, I, I, people were like very up. Some people like reached out to me. They were very upset by that. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and I mean, people are going to be idiots regardless. Uh, yeah. They're like, you know, everyone's like, oh, the, the community doesn't need this. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, no community really needs that. It was, you know, it was, I know people don't want you to say this, but it was slightly cool that that car was like 30 feet in the air. <laughs> that, that Luckily, no, but no one got hurt. And that's like, yeah. no one got hurt. Thank God we learned our lesson. One so. that speaks to the safety of the vehicle as well. But I had a, yeah. a few coworkers reach out to me because, you know, whenever you have a Tesla, you're the Tesla guy. Like you're, yeah, you're the subject yeah. matter expert. They were like, hey, man, so what do you think about that video? I was like, I mean, yeah, it was stupid. But, you know, you got, you got to admit it was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> like it's crazy that car was i just couldn't because it didn't seem like it was moving that fast going up the no. hill yeah then no it, just it, it didn't earth. feel like it yeah yeah but and I mean, i've also and, and seen be as um, heavy as it is yeah i mean and then i've also seen in that same street wherever that it's in california somewhere socal and uh i've seen a model x jump that as well um I don't know if it was like, but it didn't get as high. It was more of a normal landing, but it was like, yeah, I mean, it was stupid. I'm just happy that no one got hurt. And yeah. I, uh, and that, and that's it. Hopefully it never happens again, but, uh, I don't know. People like were really upset. I'm like, I don't, it's not going to hurt Tesla that this happened. Um, people were, there might even have caused more reservations to happen. Like you, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, you can 
something that heavy you can jump it really oh okay Let me yeah put my reservation in right now i know there there's a uh, train tracks like fairly close to me i remember um when i was first driving a tesla like i like floored it over it and i didn't jump it but i think the front tires came off the ground like oh, just because you're like oh i wonder what's gonna happen here yeah yeah for sure i mean you know and especially you know their suspension's a little stiff what now was that before or after you had your uh your your yep. coilovers put in before yeah. oh, okay before yeah, so it was stiff yeah yeah if right there yeah but yeah man I, the last question i have is just the likelihood of the ev tax credits that's you know possibly floating around and i mean I'm, i only assume that if it was to go through for point of sale you'd have more reservations happen of course yeah um i, I don't see i think the current the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit is going to be kind of what you have and yeah. if you've sold more than two hundred thousand dollars two hundred thousand units you don't qualify anymore um yeah the interesting thing is uh nissan has sold five hundred thousand leafs and I think they still qualify somehow. Mm. I'm pretty sure they still qualify for the incentive when I talked to their rep at a meet that I went to. So yeah, I don't know how that works, but yeah, it seems like um, Tesla surely doesn't need it. Their demand no. is already through the roof. And I think when these other these other manufacturers need it because they can say, hey, look, if you're looking at a Tesla, ours is $20,000 cheaper. Plus, you get this incentive. So mm -hmm. that's going to drive sales to other manufacturers. And Tesla doesn't really need the incentive. It would be awesome. I mean, if they if they put that incentive in, and I knew that was coming this year, it's like either a front end front end incentive. I'd probably order like a Model Three Performance, and you know, it'd be great for the channel, or and maybe use it as a Turo rental. I don't know. It'd be like it'd be a fun car to have. But right now, the price I look at them like. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. So I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know what the likelihood it is oh, right yeah, for now. Sure. Maybe, maybe closer to election time, it, that could change, but we'll see. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I just, I just think if, um, you know, if, if the current administration is, is trying to push electrification, be the, whether it's cars and a lot of people keep forgetting that Tesla is not just a car company. It is an yeah. energy and software company. So, I mean, you know, they just happen to sell cars. I mean, that's the medium that they chose. Yeah. If you're trying to forward that, I, I think, you know, I do think the tax credit is very important, especially front end at point of yes. sale, because, you know, what a lot of people don't know is granted $7,500, but if your tax liability doesn't meet that, you're not going to get it. It's going to be whatever your tax liability is. Yeah. And, it, and it's not like you're going to get a check for it either. So it's like for the, for the residual. So it's that almost does not do anything really yeah you know because i don't i don't know what the average tax liability of a person is from year to year either yeah. so you know but yeah if you doing a front-end tax credit is exactly what would help anybody tesla yes it probably they're you probably you probably be looking at a year and a half almost two year wait if if they did that but i mean all the other yeah. ones would give them somewhat of a fighting chance yeah no it, tesla's it would go through the roof the demand would go nuts um, but you're right. As far as a, a front end tax credit is a lot different than the $7,500 federal credit that you get right now. It's just not as clean cut as they make it sound. Um, and I really didn't even understand that for a long time because everyone talks about it like, oh, you just get this discount. Uh, and that's just not the case. Right. Um, I mean, I, I just had I had my Tesla wall connector put in in August and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get 15 percent back. And actually, I did some more digging and uh, turns out that that ran out, I think, in 2020. So I'm like, yeah, at least here, in North, at least here in North Carolina. So I'm like, great. But at least I, yeah. I do have a wall connector. Yeah, no, that's cool. I That is um, like one of the incentives out in Arizona was your registration. It, for me, my registration cost 167 for five years. Oh my gosh, that's that's awesome. That's a lot of money, and um, or that's a lot of money that I'm saving. And then yeah. I also get HOV access, which out here is a big deal because you get backed up in traffic. But um, yeah, it's just uh, now I don't think they have that. Now I don't, I don't think registration is that cheap. Like for my M2, it costs 
801 the first year is like 765 the second year 600 the third year so like it's very expensive wow. for it would have been a lot of money that's saving me thousands of dollars to have that registered for five years yeah uh, here in North carolina i really don't know what my next one's gonna be i mean i paid for the first one well technically the first one's paid for us out here right so when i re- when i renew <laughs> i don't i don't know i've been seeing variations where it's like 300 you know 400 so i'm like okay well at least i'm saving a lot on gas that's great yeah (laughs) yeah you're saving a lot on gas at least yeah yeah the other day i went to costco and filled up and um there were two cars in the stalls Mm -hmm. and then there were two cars behind them and then there was me so i pulled in and i immediately i hit my stopwatch on my phone and it took because everyone was like oh, you'll wait in line for 30 minutes, but you won't charge your electric car. And um, it took me six minutes and 13 seconds for that whole line to go down and for me to fill up. So like, it's still way faster than Mm -hmm. like charging a car. It doesn't, you're not, even though those Costco lines look crazy, they look crazier than than it actually takes. So uh, I don't know, I always try to like, bring some balance to what's going on in the internet if you go on tesla twitter it's yeah. crazy like yeah. people people are so like i don't know like just twisted about this tesla world yeah. and it's great but it's just so yeah. like one-sided yeah no it is and it's and i tell people i'm like yeah i still have a gas car what are you talking about like yeah. i and and just like you said earlier i mean it, the perfect storm of owning an electric vehicle is to have a gas vehicle and a tesla the Tesla mm-hmm. is what you use to commute in town or, yep. you know, not too far from home or or what have you. Because, I mean, and honestly, I've been working from home for two years since the pandemic. So my yeah. Traverse, I've filled that thing up. Maybe I fill it up like once every three weeks. And that's if I drive it. Yeah. So and, and the Tesla is the workhorse. So my wife goes to work. She comes home. I hop in it and I go do what I need to do because it's cheaper. Yep. I, I here here in North Carolina, I charge for a, a dollar. Well. If I take it down to about 50, 45 percent, I charge for about maybe two dollars and ten cents a night. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well, I still own a gas car, but I just said, you know what? This just makes sense. And especially after that gas short. Now, here's the other thing I was telling my wife today. I was like, um, yeah, you know, with all the with these gas prices, wouldn't it be awesome if they just said, hey, um, we have a gas shortage, too? Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just drop the bomb. It's like we're we're at war. Gas prices are high, and we have yep. a shortage. It's yeah, like, you know I know. What? That yeah, that would open up a lot of people to yeah electrification. Yeah, I, I also don't feel um, I don't feel uh, like bad driving my um, like I drive my Tesla harder than I drive my M two, which is crazy. Yeah. Like that's a performance car. I should be having fun in it, but I'm always like, okay, is it, is it warmed up? Um, it's also <laughs> loud. So if I go like bombing, you know, you can't, it's just, I don't know. It's uh, it's good to have both. I love both of them. Um, Tesla yeah. just, thank God they made a car that was fun to drive. Yeah. And, and for me, I used to have, uh, I used to have motorcycles. Uh, the latest okay. one that I had was a, was a Harley, a Harley road glide. That I love. Okay. I would hop on that thing. You know, that's my sister. Um, I used to hop on that thing at the drop of a hat, and it was gas efficient technically. Um, it didn't yeah. cost much, but you know, when I when I traded in for my Traverse, and that's where my Tesla kind of fills that acceleration need and that 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 wild side of me, you know. And I and people yeah. were crazy. They thought I was crazy for saying that. They was like, "So you don't miss your motorcycle at all?" I was like, "With those four wheels, no, I'm good. I'm all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fine." Yeah, it's like I I will yeah. smoke possibly most motorcycles on the highway. So yeah, fine. At least up to oh yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, and then from a dig, um, my buddy in uh, Virginia has a Model Three Performance, and we've ripped it around, and it's like it's endlessly fun. I mean, yeah. when you floor it from a light and you look back when you're going like seventy, they're yeah. still crossing through the intersection. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, for it's, sure. It's a crazy thing, yeah. And then the plaid is obviously a second faster than that. Like it's. it's yeah, I, I had some some guy in an Audi, like from a light, 
try to race me. And it's weird because you, you really get into this focus mode. And yeah. as soon as the light turns green, I actually let him go a little bit ahead of me. And I was like, yeah, I'm out. And it was like, yeah, by the time, by the time he knew it, I was already gone. It was like, yeah, yeah, but, I know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah, it was cute. Yeah. All right. So now we're coming, you know, winding down to the end of the show. Um, you know, what, what, what's some of the things that G has, has, that, he, that he's working on? What, what you got? If, if you can share, of course. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll share what I can. Um, I'm just trying to, so obviously I do this full time, so I have to make an income doing what I do. And, and about 60% of my income is YouTube, 40% is sponsors right now. That's about the breakup. That's about what the breakup was last year. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm working on creating more, more original and possibly viral content. Um, so I've never had like a viral Tesla video and I'm just constantly brainstorming on what I can do to improve my, my thumbnails and my titles, because I think my content is good. Like, I think once people get into the video and they realize that, you know, some of the crazy things that I say or whatever, I think they'll like the content, but I think maybe the billboard for my video is, uh, could use some improvement. So okay. I'm just going through my, my list of videos and working on hooking people in, but also delivering on what I'm saying is going to happen in the video. Like you can't clickbait people and say, jumping my Tesla across the Grand Canyon and you don't do that. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's that, it's that fine line. And I think, I think sometimes I'm a little, I don't think my audience will mind if I go a little more extreme on my uh, thumbnail and titles, because they have been with me long enough to know that they'll, they're going to enjoy the content of the video. Yeah. So um, I'm just, I'm just, trying to refine that, trying to find ways to make my um, content better, trying to upgrade my audio. Um, I've ordered more parts from Unplugged Performance to build like a, a street slash track build of my Model Y. Nice. Um, so I, I have some things on order from them, but I, I everything's back ordered. So who knows when that's going to come in. And then I'm going to go to... Um, a uh, track in Tucson called Indy Motorsports Ranch and uh, do a track day with them, uh, race the M4 that they have and and set like some lap times with their pro driver. Nice. So uh, that that's like the more exciting stuff that's coming up. Um, trying to think. Yeah, I, I just, uh, just trying to incremental, incrementally uh, improve my content. Um, starting to lean on my buddy Andrew more for editing. Um, yeah. That way, like I, I watch a lot of like Mr. Beast, not necessarily his videos, but I watch him uh, talk about how his process. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, while I, I have to pay Andrew to edit the videos, I can then use my full energy to create the videos, um, yeah. to think of the different camera angles that will work and think of things that'll be unique to point out or say or do and put all my energy into that and then let Andrew put all of his energy into editing them. So I, I think that formula um, is going to pay off in the long run and the audience will be happier, which will lead to more views. Um, so yeah. And, uh, and I think the other thing is just saying my dog, uh, <laughs> the other thing is uh, just saying uh, no to uh, some of the sponsors that are coming in um, mm -hmm. a lot of people want you to do things for free they'll come in and say uh, yeah we would love to send you this product to show in your videos and i'm like okay well i charge a fee so here's my fee and they're like well we're and they always come back with the same line they're like we're a small startup company and we're trying to i'm like i i get it but like i've been doing this i've built a channel for 10 years 11 years mm -hmm. and i'm not you know, unless the product is just like groundbreaking or, or it's very right. expensive or something um, like you have to put your foot down. Like, this is what I do for a living. So and I'm also good at it. And there's companies that I've worked with that I've sold um, tens of thousands, some of them probably over one hundred thousand dollars worth of product. And I have a small YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So um, 
you can imagine what some of those bigger ones are doing. I guess just, I guess what I'm saying is I'm starting to understand my value. So mm-hmm. I'm able to uh, negotiate better with sponsors. And I'm just trying to really focus on having better content. And uh, ultimately, the better content will uh, lead to money, which will then let me stay with my consistent sponsors like Hydra Silex or Tame or, or whoever and uh, just be creative because ultimately that's what people want to see. They don't want to see another ad for Ridge Wallet. They want to just be entertained and uh, and that, that Ridge Wallet actually reached out to me and I was like, oh my God, like this is cool. Like some of my favorite <laughs> podcast, like people advertise this. Yeah. And they're like, uh, they're like, we would like to offer you $100 and you can show this, show this wallet off. And I was like, that's, I'm sorry. Like I don't, that's under my rate yeah. and I sent in my rate and they just never responded. But I'm like, I, yeah. I, yeah, ultimately I, I guess what I'm learning is it's exciting the thought of saying, Oh, like I have a sponsor, like someone's going to sponsor me. That's Mm -hmm. a, that was very cool. Like at first. Um, but I think like if I were to give advice, like a newer creator, I would say like, stay true to worrying about creating the absolute best content you can. All the other stuff will come. I'm not saying don't take the sponsorship, right? Take it, but don't just be saying, Yes, 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 yes. Because eventually it'll lot it'll wear you down. And uh, there was a point where I was working on some videos, and I was like, "Man, this actually is like draining to me because it, I'm not energetic about this." So <laughs> I just sent some product back and just like just focus in a little bit more and uh, on the content as opposed to the sponsors. But that's you know. great advice because yeah, I'm I'm a very small channel, so you know mm-hmm. I'm. I'm trying to generate some stuff here because my, my thing is I love EVs. I love tech. That's just what I do. Um, yeah. You know, and, and that's, and, you know, so I, I definitely receive everything that you're saying because you, I, I just, you know, I feel like you're speaking to me because I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, I'm trying to get to the sponsorship level myself. Yep. Yeah. So. No, it's uh, really the, yeah. The most important thing is like thumbnail and title ultimately are like, you really have to nail those. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, you know, like once you get into your content, it's going to be like, you repeat what is in that, what it's in that title. You immediately tell the viewer that at the beginning of the video, you get right into they. if you click a video and they immediately feed you what you clicked for, then the person is hooked. Mm. So you want to get them in that first 10 seconds of that video and be like, Oh, Oh, perfect. Okay, we're doing this. And then you can switch and be like, but first, we're going to go and do this. And it, you oh. can bring them along this trail. Um, and you just want to just get them in on that first second. I'm just trying to, because when I look at my like audience retention, my graph mm-hmm. is like, like this. So people in that first 10 seconds of the video are still clicking off. I'm just trying to flatten that a little bit um, okay. by hooking them and, and feeding them exactly what, what they want right away. Um, yeah. And then trimming out the fat because some things that are interesting to me to talk about because I've either been in that situation or I was out doing it is not necessarily interesting to someone else who doesn't really know what I'm talking about. So I'm just trying to constantly focus in on on what's important to the viewer and get them hooked in and make them laugh along the way and give them the information that the, the title sells. So that's yeah, I'm, I'm working on a lot of different things, but that's what YouTube is. It's it's a yeah. lot of different well, things you have to be good at. Well, you are really good at making us laugh and, you know, the contents about your cars and stuff. So we definitely you, you're definitely the cream of the crop when it comes to entertainment. And I absolutely love it. And like I said, if I speak I for any of your fans, we absolutely support you. Continue doing what you're doing. It is, it's awesome. Um, my wife cried at your now, baby announcement <laughs> video. So, yeah. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a totally different side of you to like, honestly, see you cry. I was just like, whoa, time yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I actually, yeah, I even thinking about that, I get a little choked up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got, <laughs> hey, blessings to you guys, man. Definitely, de- you guys got a name picked out? Um, You don't have to reveal it, but I just want to know no, what you're, you're doing. Uh, yeah, it's not a secret. We're we're in between a bunch. Um. I, I was think Mia was like my 
one of the first ones that I that oh. I came up with, and it's kind of funny because like I'm a big fan of the Fast and Furious. Yeah. So like Mia, um, uh, Dom's sister. Uh, yep. So it was like kind of, but uh, yeah, I don't. We we haven't decided yet, but we're still uh, okay. We're still working on it, but yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a good video, and that's that's an example of a video where I thought I'm like, oh, this is this is real. This could go viral. And it did well, like ten thousand. Like if I if I have a video that crosses ten thousand views, like I'm I'm happy with that. I'm still working up, um, yeah. but I thought that was gonna like take off, and it just didn't. Yeah, and it's just, time. I mean, you just released it like what a, less than a week ago. Yeah, about a week ago, something. Yeah, like, yeah. so who yeah. knows? Yeah, give give it some time. I mean, because I mean, your yeah. your loyal fans and even other people, you know, because. I know I recommend your videos to people that's uh, looking at Tesla. So, which means, yeah. how, depending on how many people I refer to you, they will watch X amount of videos and they will refer people. So, hey, yeah. it's, it, from what I see, it takes time. I mean, you, you, you're you at, you're at a really good spot. I know you're trying to strive to get higher. So, definitely, you know, keep grinding at it, man. I mean, you you did the you did the unthinkable. I mean, just saying, you know what, I'm just going to quit. I, I'm just going to do this full time. That's a dream, man. You're, you're building financial freedom. You're building... Uh, a life that you control 100 percent man so yeah definitely keep going yeah no thank you i yeah i appreciate your support in that yeah it's cool to hear um yeah it's cool to hear feedback from people that actually watch the videos and are invested in it because i yeah i take that to heart i try to you know I, i'm still ultimately i'm the one to making decisions but i do listen um to what people have to say so yeah no i appreciate that yeah you're absolutely awesome but yeah, so thank you for the time that you've given us um, away from your family. Um, yeah, you know anybody that if you're looking to get uh, see what Jeeves is up to, you can find him at Twitter at, at Jeeves or on YouTube. Just look up Jeeves; he's the only one that I've seen, and you'll know him when you see him. He's an absolutely funny guy. Um, definitely knows his content, knows his viewers. He's doing he's doing his thing and about to join the Daddy Club. So you know, definitely yep. congrats. And uh, if, you. if you got anything to say to the viewers, uh, go ahead. No, uh, yeah, I appreciate your continued continued support. Um, also, let's give Nine Dime Media some love here. It's a good interview. It was fun. I like doing podcasts. So, um, yeah, no, it, it was uh, lots of exciting things to come, um, possibly more road trips. But, uh, yeah, always open to people's feedback. So, And I appreciate you having me on here. Yeah, no problem. Abs absolutely. Thank you for answering. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, definitely want to get up with you later. Uh, probably interact with you on Twitter. You know, once again, cool. thank, thanks for thanks for joining. Yeah, absolutely.